Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the UCT Virtual Open Week and uh, specifically to the presentation on construction studies and property studies. I am Associate Professor Kathy Michelle, the Head of Department for Construction Economics and Management. Very quickly this afternoon, um, I just want to run through the two undergraduate degrees that we have in the department, the Bachelor of Science in Construction Studies and the Bachelor of Science in Property Studies. Both of these undergraduate degrees basically lead to three career options for you. And then lastly, I'll just quickly cover the entrance requirements for 2021. So for those of you that are possibly considering a career in quantity surveying, the role of a quantity survey essentially is to predict and manage all costs relating to construction and engineering projects from the initial planning stages right the way through to the finished project or product. They are responsible for minimizing costs during construction, ensuring value for money for the client, while still ensuring that the project meets all legal requirements and quality standards. As a graduate quantity surveyor, you have numerous employment opportunities open to you in professional consultancy work, construction and property development, civil engineering works, structural, mechanical and electrical engineering companies. You could work on government infrastructure projects, community services projects, and you could also work in the insurance and banking industries. The degrees with us um, at the University of Cape Town provide you with numerous international opportunities. The honors here degrees after your undergraduate ones are fully accredited by the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors, which is your global ticket. Quantity surveyors around the world or chartered surveyors are sought after and they create, there are many, many lucrative employment opportunities for our graduates. The personality traits of a QS, everything to do with integrity and professionalism. If you're practical minded, enjoy problem solving, are innovative in the way that you think, enjoy working with numbers, are a team player, and aspire to being a leader <clears throat> and running project teams, this is the career for you. Just to give you an idea of the earning potential once you actually graduate, newly graduated QSs at the moment in South Africa are earning around 18,000 Rand per month. And within three to five years are around 28,000 Rand a month. For a career in construction and project management, in case that's the route that you want to go, construction managers coordinate and supervise a wide variety of building projects. Basically, they set schedules, keep an eye on finances, make sure everybody is where they're supposed to be every day and doing what they're supposed to be doing on the project ensure that there are no safety hazards around the construction site, and in general, keep everybody happy and productive. Again, there are numerous employment opportunities for you after graduation in construction companies, civil engineering, earthwork and mining companies, again with structural, mechanical and electrical engineering companies, government infrastructure projects, community services, education and training, project management and arbitration, and you could possibly even be self-employed having your own little construction company. With the honors in construction management, you would again be afforded numerous international opportunities. The honors degree in construction management is fully accredited by both the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors and the Chartered Institute of Building. Construction managers are sought after worldwide, which creates many lucrative employment opportunities across the globe for you as a UCT graduate. Construction managers, again, as with all our programs in our department, are underpinned by integrity and professionalism. If you are very practically minded, organized and efficient, an innovative thinker, action oriented, a team player, and aspire to leadership, managerial, and very good communication skills, my department is the place for you. Again, as a professional construction manager, to give you an idea of your initial earning potential, Within two years of graduation, you'd be looking at about 16,000 Rand a month at current prices. Within three to 10 years, about 35,000 Rand a month. And after 11 years, about 65,000. And after that, it's 65,000 per month plus profit share. For those of you interested in a career in the property industry, 
<clears throat> Our suite of property degrees offer you numerous career options in property development, asset management, portfolio management, property finance, valuation, property law, property brokering, and if you're passionate about sustainability, there's the opportunity to be involved in green buildings. The employment opportunities open to you as a property graduate are wide and varied. When we look at where our graduates are working, we never cease to be amazed. Some work for development companies like CIF, Rabi and Faircag. Others work in the banking sector like Netbank Corporate, Stanner Bank, Investec, Rand Merchant Bank, ABSA and FNB. Some work for insurance companies like Old Mutual, Sunlum and Liberty. Others with investment companies like Alan Gray, or the large property companies like Growth Point, Redefine, Brawl and Eris. There are many other opportunities available that we have heard where our graduates are working, for example, for the VNA Waterfront Company, Property Listed Funds and the Green Building Council of South Africa. Again, numerous international opportunities are open to you with the property suite of degrees. They are fully accredited by the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors. Property practitioners are sought after worldwide, which creates many lucrative employment opportunities across the globe for you as a UCT graduate. Again, integrity and professionalism are key to all that we do. So if you are honest, uh, confident, committed, have a positive attitude, good with numbers, specifically money, and again, aspire to be a leader managerial, have managerial skills and very good communication skills, my department is the place for you. To give you an idea again of earning income potential, newly graduated property students at the moment are earning between 18,000 and 25,000 Rand a month straight after graduation. Within two years, between 25 and 35,000. After about four years, between 35,000 and 80,000 Rand per month. And eight to 10 years, 80,000 to 100,000. And those with 15 years plus experience appear to be earning in excess of 100,000 Rand per month. To give you our entrance requirements for 2021, uh, very simply, if you are going the construction route, um, coming to do the BSc construction studies, which leads on to either the honours in quantity surveying or the honours in construction management, then you need 65% and above for maths, NSC maths, 55% and above for physical science and a faculty point score of 390. If you're doing the property degree, um, which leads on to the honours in property studies. We are looking for 65% and above for maths and a faculty point score of 390. Questions are very welcome and we look forward to meeting you in 2021. Please post questions in the Q&A. Kathy, I think it may be important to just explain the return to honours, so where construction studies takes you and where the property studies takes you, so that there's no confusion um, around planning for honours. Okay. Um, if you're coming into first year next year on the BSc Construction Studies programme, um, then you would be eligible for either going the route of the honours in quantity surveying or the route of the honours in construction management. Um, it is a separate degree. The honours is postgraduate, so you start with the undergraduate in construction studies. Um, and what we look for in order to get into honours is a what we call a grade point average on the undergraduate degree of 65%. So it's basically an average result over your three years. On the property degree, for those of you that are looking to do the property studies degree, you would start in first year with the Bachelor of Science in Property. Same thing, an aggregate of 65% in order to get into the honours in property studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there's a question about the maths requirements. There was a, there's been some questions about maths lit. Um, does that, is, is that acceptable? Unfortunately, we don't accept maths literacy. Uh, we want the pure maths for National Senior Certificate. So if you have done or are doing maths lit uh, for NSC, we would, unfortunately, you wouldn't get in. But we can always give you advice on what to do. Um, 
in that situation. Okay. There was another question around technical mathematics and technical um, science courses, but you've answered that. Um, and then there's a question around um, how many students are accepted into to the property studies sector. I'm assuming they mean the degree program. Mm -hmm. um, that's quite a hard one to answer. It's almost as, as the same as asking me how long is a piece of string. Notionally, uh, we take 55 students uh, into each program into both degrees, so it's 110 altogether into first year. Which is um, a good thing, D don't be panicked by that. Um, we, our class sizes tend to be that size. Um, we, it doesn't matter too much if we overshoot the target in inverted commas, if we go more than 55. Um, I think this year we have 70 students in first year property. And then there's a question around um, if my application was declined for BSc property studies because of the results I applied with. Will I be accepted in February if my NSC results are higher? Uh, without, knowing, yeah, without knowing the specificity of, of your actual application, um, whoever's asking that, uh, if you meet our entrance requirements, then yes, you would be sent an offer. So for property, the minimum that we're looking for is 65% national senior certificate maths result and a faculty point score of 390. If you're monitoring the Q&A, so do they know how they calculate the faculty point score? Um, there's no indication that they do. Um, there seems so at this point, no. Um, and then there was a question um, around um, <clears throat> the difference between civil engineering and construction studies. If you can just give a kind of a clarification between the two. in terms of career options, I presume, or actually what the degrees entail? The difference in the degrees, and then obviously where it takes you. Okay, so civil engineers, um, and I, I don't want to put them into too much of a, of a box, they, they only deal with the civil engineering work, so that's um, the design and construction of roads, uh, bridges, um, dams, some of them go into structural engineering, which is around designing the concrete um, component of very large buildings. Um, some become, I think, geotechnical engineers, which is about understanding um, what's happening below the ground for construction work. Uh, and some, I think, also go into water engineering. Um, the construction studies, the engineering program is an engineering program. It's design orientated, very heavy with the maths and um, physics. So I think they do at least two or three years of maths at university. Construction studies is completely different. We are more commerce orientated, to be frank. Uh, we'll give you the construction toolbox that you need in order to work as a construction manager or as a quantity surveyor. But for example, in first year of the construction studies degree, you will do construction technology and you will do engineering drawing with the civil engineers. But the maths course that you will do with us is only half a year. And you will also do uh, economics, you'll do accounting and business law and labor law um, during your construction studies degree. So construction managers tend to be um, and quantity surveyors tend to be more involved on the building side of the construction sector as opposed to the civil engineering work, which roads, bridges, dams, that kind of thing. Yeah, and then there was a question from another another attendee that's not accepted conditionally. Can I still get accepted? Yes. A, a conditional offer 
basically means um, that as a university, we look have looked at your results to date that you've submitted and you meet our entrance requirements. Therefore, do the same in your final NSC result and you you're in. We will see you at orientation week next year. And there was a similar type question, but phrased slightly differently and it said, can students get permanent acceptance with matric I said, trial results? I'm assuming they're referring to their mock matrics. No, and for, um, it, it's, it's actually illegal to give you a formal offer to the university until such time as you actually have your national senior certificate. So um, a conditional offer means we are, we are holding a place for you. So we're keeping a, a seat open for you, if that makes sense. Um, and then there was a question around, do we differentiate between IEB and NSC results? No, we don't. We don't differentiate between IEB and NSC. And there's a general question around, um, is there an advantage concerning the two degrees? Which one has an added advantage over the other? <laughs> That's a good question. I think it depends on which of my staff you speak to. Um, <laughs> they're both excellent degrees. I think um, possibly what you need to do is, uh, if you're not sure, uh, you're more than welcome to contact us direct uh, in the department and um, or drop us an email and uh, someone can reply or you can, you know, if you need advice about about where you would like to be. So possibly what you need to ask is, you know, where you see yourself in five or six years time, if that's possible. Not very easy, I know, to answer that kind of question when you're 18. Um, but yeah, they, they are very relatively different career options, but all three of them are very exciting. Well, both of the undergraduate degrees are, are very exciting as far as we can see. There's a, well, it's a comment, but it kind of follows on from that. It says quantity surveying seems to be almost similar to property studies. They both have so much to do with money. So maybe just an elaboration to elaborate on the, the similarities and the differences, I guess. Um, OK, so quantities of ads, yes, are concerned about money, but it's specifically the money to do with uh, the actual construction process and uh, minimizing a client's risk exposure in terms of the actual development, the cost of construction. The property graduates are a completely different um, type of graduate and it's a completely different uh, degree it's it is it's not really possible to switch between the two without uh, compromising a year or it usually will take a year um, the property students are in terms of money um, are the client of the qs if it puts it that way if they're the developer they're the one that appoints the quantity surveyor to look after their money in the actual development process or uh, if they're working in the banking sector, they could be um, the bank that's actually providing the property finance to fund the very large development. Um, those that work in the listed sector and the insurance companies are probably managing large asset property asset portfolios um, because uh, property assets are a recognized equity class. So they would be working side by side with the actuarial scientists the actuaries, those that do the business science and actuarial science, they are worried about shares and stock options on the JSE. Um, but one of the major asset classes is real estate or property, and our graduates are the ones that are managing that asset class. I don't know if that um, answers the question. And then uh, there was a question around um, differentiation between um, uh, Cambridge, Cambridge uh, results in NSC. Um, yeah, there are Cambridge, the Cambridge A level results. I haven't published them or put them in the presentation, um, but they are in the undergraduate prospectus, which you can download from the UCT website. One of the requirements for both degrees would be maths at the A level. And a minimum score. I don't remember the exact symbol offhand. Um, 
and for construction we would want either we would want maths at the a level and i think um, either physics or chemistry So then there's a question around transferring students. Um, what happens if they're already in, uh, what happens if they're already at UCT and they want to transfer across to either property or construction studies? What is the process then? Um, you, they can either drop me an email direct um, or uh, they can email one of the program conveners. So for construction studies, you would email Karen Lejeune and for property, you would email Saul Nurek. Then again, there's another question um, around. They've learned that there are only 45 students that are accepted for property studies and construction studies respectively, and I'm concerned that my master's result will impact my application negatively. Should I be unsuccessful for 2021 cycle? Do I have, do you have any recommendations to master their maths? But let's split that question in because it's around the, the, the number of applicants we accept. Um, again, I think um, it's, it's not easy to answer that question. We, we, if you meet our entrance requirements as published in the undergraduate uh, prospectus, you will get an offer. We will honour what is published in the undergrad perspectives. I haven't published that. That faculty point score is quite high for guaranteed entry. Um, we don't, the, the, the sad um, reality is that we usually send out a lot more offers than um, relative to the number of students that actually arrive on registration day. So um, our target is 55 in each program. And if we go over that, that is fine. I think a few years ago, I'm just thinking back in the history, um, we had, I think it was around 130 students in the first year of property. <laughs> and then the second question, Saul, remind me. Was around improving maths, if their maths mark wasn't um, okay. high enough. What is the what is the strategy there? Okay, so you would have uh, one of two options, obviously, to either redo your national senior certificate maths um, the following year with the aim of improving it. The other alternative is to have a plan B uh, with another degree. Um, either at UCT, um, and I would say that if you if you don't get into us, then it's unlikely you would get into commerce, but you may still get into social science. So if you did a, a Bachelor of Social Science degree with a major, for example, in economics, um, you would do first year varsity maths. So what we would be looking for is either an improved national senior certificate maths mark or evidence the, of maths proficiency at first year university level. So that could also mean that you might go to say Stellenbosch University and do a BCom where you do first year maths um, and then you would apply to transfer into us the following year. So I think for, for anybody who may fall into that category in February next year, because we're hearing that the NEC results will only come out towards the end of Feb in 2021. Um, you are more than welcome to contact the department direct. Um, you can always email me um, as the head and uh, we can always give you personal one on one advice based on your matric results, uh, what we would what we would recommend that you do. But in the meantime, you need to plan if you feel that you're on the borderline of your maths results, then you may want to plan for um, a plan B. Then there's someone who's um, asking, 
There's someone who's asking um, about uh, being given a firm offer of probability studies, but they want to swap to construction studies if they improve their physics at O level. That's fine. Um, we can we can we can always. It's easy when it's internal in the department. The the only um, thing is that you would need to meet our fifty five percent science requirement, um, and we can do that literally in orientation week. Now here's another another open ended question, um, which you partly answered, but I'll let you do it again because we're running out of time. It says, what skills would a student doing the property studies degree expect to acquire after completing the degree? <clears throat> Gosh, it's quite a long list, um, but uh, the ability to um, undertake property developments, to finance that development, to manage a portfolio of properties, the ability to value property, and that's not like an estate agent, uh, value property as in value shopping centers and large office blocks and agricultural land and petrol stations. And um, so it's, you will be able to value houses, residential sector, but it's also about learning how to value commercial and industrial and retail properties as well. Um, you would also have the ability to manage that property um, as a landlord. Um, some of our students become property brokers, which is in the commercial sector. Um, some would have some that choose to go that route. You would have the skill set to become an asset manager, a property asset manager. Um, yeah, so it's very, very broad um, and we as staff in the department are available once you with us uh, to have numerous conversations with um, the staff in the department around what your career options are, where your interests lie and and which route you may want to take after graduation. And I think that that's just another point to kind of uh, re-emphasize. There have been a number of questions around if I if I haven't you made an accept, made a provisional offer, um, but my matric results are good enough um, in terms of the entrance requirements? Can I still get in? Yes. Okay, that seems yes. to be quite a bit. <laughs> um, if you haven't received a conditional offer, even for those of you that may be sort of um, on the cusp, uh, my sort of final word would be to encourage you. This is the last um, hurdle as you finish your school career. Put everything that you have into doing the best that you can in the NSC, um, in your matric. Uh, we don't make a final, at UCT, we do not make a final decision on a student um, until such time as we have your final, final national senior certificate results, which we have, we plan, I think we will get in February next year. Yeah, so this is the last push. Uh, put your heads down, good luck, study hard, Aim high, and the future is yours to seize with us. And also, just to finish off, um, there have been one or two questions around architecture, um, but we can't we can't answer those questions directly. Um, so we might want to just uh, emphasise that this is not a route to architecture. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> If you have any queries about architecture, I would I would highly recommend that you contact the School of Architecture, Planning and Geomatics direct. Um, it, I don't think that you could use construction or property as a as a backdoor into architecture. Perfect. Then I think um, all that's left is I think for me to say goodbye on behalf of the Department of Construction, Economics and Management and my staff. All the best for your National Senior Certificate or your IEB exams or your A-levels, whichever one you're doing. And we really do look forward to welcoming all of you to our department in 2021. Keep safe, keep well. <laughs>